Without a doubt, the number one question that we're asked is what is the difference between claims made and occurrence malpractice coverage? If that's a question that you've struggled with, you're not alone. Today, we're going to give you the answers and provide some real life examples of when you might choose one over the other. And by the end of this episode, you'll be equipped to make the right choice for protecting your practice for the long haul. Welcome to Malpractice Insights, the show dedicated to helping healthcare professionals understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. My name is Jennifer Wiggins, CEO of Aegis Malpractice Solutions, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We release a new episode every week, both on YouTube and your favorite podcast streaming platform, so be sure to like and subscribe to stay connected. Just a quick reminder, though, before we jump in, we are here to provide general information on medical malpractice insurance and related topics, but not specific legal or insurance advice. So if you have a question about your practice or individual coverage needs, be sure to ask your agent or legal advisor or contact us at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S malpractice.com. We'd be happy to help. In the world of medical malpractice insurance, there are two types of policies that you can buy, claims made and occurrence. In order to make sure you're setting yourself up for success down the road, it's important that you understand what makes these policies different. Yes, it can be a little tricky, but the easiest way to remember the difference is this. The name describes how the coverage is triggered. So. If you have an occurrence policy, your malpractice coverage is triggered based on when the incident actually occurred. If you have a claims made policy, your malpractice coverage is triggered based on when the claim is made against you. So let's unpack it a little, starting with the occurrence policy. If you have an occurrence policy, Again, the coverage triggers based on the date when the incident actually occurred, regardless of when the claim was filed against the provider. So here's how that works. A doctor will buy an occurrence policy on day one and then carry the insurance until the time comes when he needs to cancel. After he cancels the insurance, then he can actually just walk away. There's nothing else required at the end of an occurrence policy. There's no tail insurance requirement, We'll actually talk about this later. He can just move on. Those occurrence policies will then stay active and in force with that insurance carrier. So if a claim is ever made against him for patients that he treated during the years in which he was insured on the occurrence policy, those policies are then available for him to access for insurance coverage. Again, occurrence coverage triggers based on when the incident actually occurred. So if a doctor starts his occurrence policy on, let's say, January 1st, 2020, and then he carries the insurance for, say, 10 years, and then he cancels it on January 1st, 2030, that policy covers him for those patients that he treated for those 10 years. Again, regardless of when the claim is filed, those policies are there for him. He could have a claim made against him during those 10 years, or he could have a claim made against him later on. It doesn't matter. Those policies will stay active and in force with the carrier to cover him for any incidents that occurred during those years. The other thing that's unique about an occurrence coverage is how the limits are structured. An occurrence policy, each year that you renew it, retains its limits from the prior year. So when I'm explaining this to doctors, I like to use the analogy of books on a bookshelf. So for those of you who are watching here on YouTube, I'll demonstrate. For those that are listening, here's how it works. So you buy an occurrence policy year one. Let's say it runs January 1st, 2020, and then it runs for one year. So this policy would go January 1st, 2020 to January 1st, 2021. And let's assume that this doctor buys a 1 million, 3 million policy limit. So once he buys it, then we'll put the book back on the bookshelf. Then the next year, you'll renew. 
This policy runs January 1st, 2021 to January 1st, 2022. Let's assume you keep the 1 million, 3 million limits. So again, once you buy it, put the book back on the bookshelf. Then again, year three, you'll renew from January 1st, 2022 to January 1st, 2023. Again, 1 million, 3 million limits. Put the book back on the bookshelf. Year four, year five, year six, and so on. And then if you ever have a claim made against you for a patient in LEN, let's say the year 2023, you simply take the 2023 policy off your shelf, you open it up, make sure there's coverage, rip off a page, essentially pay the claim if necessary, then close your book and put it back on the bookshelf for the duration of your policy period. What's unique about the occurrence policy type is that these limits remain independent of one another. So you still have your full 1 million, 3 million for 2020. You have 1 million, 3 million for 2021, for 2022, for 2023, and so on and so forth. But for that one year when you had a payout in year 2023, let's say it was a $200,000 loss. For that policy limit, those limits would be reduced to a 1 million, 2.8 million. So essentially you take your 3 million minus the $200,000 loss. So you still have your 1 million per claim limit, but your aggregate has gone down. So any paid claims or losses are only taken out of the individual policy year when the incident occurred. So again, an occurrence policy is triggered based upon when the incident actually occurs. So this is really robust coverage. These limits will stack up year over year, and then you can access them down the road as needed. Even if down the road you end up switching carriers or even moving to a claims made policy, these occurrence policies will stay active and in force with the carrier that you purchased them from. Now, let's switch gears and talk about claims made coverage. So again, occurrence coverage triggers based on when the incident actually occurs, but claims made policies are triggered based on when the claim is made against you. So here's what that would look like. If a doctor buys a claims made policy year one, he would renew that policy year over year until the time when he needs to cancel the insurance. Once he cancels the insurance, he's not done. A claims made policy is really two policies in one. You have to carry the insurance while you're actively practicing, but then after you cancel it, you have to get a second policy, and this is called tail insurance. Sometimes it's also called an extended reporting endorsement, but most people just refer to it as tail coverage. Your tail will start at the cancellation date and then it'll extend into the future for any claims that may be made against you after you've already walked away from that policy. So to see what this looks like, let's use the same example that we did before. So let's say our doctor starts his claims made policy on January 1st of 2020 and then renews the policy every year until he cancels on January 1st, 2030. At that time, he has to secure tail insurance. The tail insurance is really important because if you don't buy it, it's as if you never had any coverage before. So again, remember how this coverage triggers based on when the claim is made. So if you don't have insurance in place at the time that the claim is made, then you're not covered. Even if you paid premiums for all of those years before, it doesn't mean anything if you don't have that tail. The other thing that's unique about claims made policies is how their limits are structured. So this is different than our occurrence limits like we talked about before. This is not gonna be our bookshelf analogy. Actually, in this instance, I like to use the example of a rubber band and a peg on a board. So here's what that would look like. So if you drop your peg in the board on the first date of your coverage, this is called your retroactive date or your inception date. You'll take your rubber band and you'll wrap it around your peg and then you'll stretch it for your first year. So let's say we have a 1 million, 3 million policy again. This means you have 1 million, 3 million worth of coverage for any patients that you've treated from January 1st, 2020 through January 1st, 2021, assuming that any claim made against you is in this time period. 
you'll renew the policy again for a second year. And now we're going to stretch our rubber band a little bit further. Now we have 1 million, 3 million worth of coverage for any claims made against you from your retroactive date, which is January 1st, 2020 to January 1st, 2022, assuming the claim is made against you in the same period. This is going to continue every year that you renew. So stretching your rubber band further and further and further until the time that you cancel. Once you cancel, we're going to actually take a second peg and drop that in the board too. So now we have a retro date and a cancellation date. This is the time when you must secure some form of tail insurance in order to continue to be covered for any claims made against you for the patients that you treated during these years. If you don't get tail insurance, you're not covered. So again, claims made coverage triggers based upon when the claim is made against you. You must have insurance in place at the time that the claim is made in order for there to be coverage. And the policy limits, instead of those stacking year over year like they did in our occurrence policy, they're stretched over the duration of the policy period. So you have one policy limit for the full time period from retro date to cancellation date. Tail insurance is a one time purchase. It will cost you approximately one and a half to two times the price of your last insurance premium. You'll secure it within 30 days of canceling your coverage. And the carrier, once you buy it, is going to issue you an endorsement that shows your policy limits and then the dates of your coverage, which again will be your retro date to your cancellation date. In most instances, doctors will either buy this on their own or sometimes their group or their employer will buy it for them. You can also earn free tail insurance in the event that you're completely retiring from the practice of medicine or in the event of death or disability. It is possible, however, for you to defer the purchase of tail until a later date. Here's what that would look like. Let's go back to our doctor that started his claims made coverage on January 1st, 2020, and then he carried it for 10 years and he canceled it on January 1st, 2030. If this doctor wanted to switch insurance companies, maybe he found one that has a better rate, maybe he's relocated and he has to go to a new carrier, he can actually ask that new insurance carrier to pick up his prior acts back to January 1st of 2020. If the carrier approves, that means that they pick up that old retro date and carry it forward onto their policy. So now they will be responsible for coverage for any claims made for patients treated back to that original inception date. Then the doctor would just continue with this new insurance carrier until the time that he wants to cancel. At that point then, he'll either have to buy his tail or he could continue and move on to another carrier and the process goes on and on. However, at some point, he's going to have to buy the tail. That can't go on forever. So now you're probably wondering, all right, that's a lot of information. What's the difference between the pricing for these? Surely they're different. One's probably super expensive and one's not. Well, you're kind of right. So here's what that looks like. An occurrence premium is a little more expensive on an annual basis, but the rate is really stable. So you'll essentially pay the same price every single year for the duration of your policy period. A claims made premium actually starts really low, but then it increases in price every year for about five years until it reaches what we call the mature price. Once it reaches the mature price, you'll essentially pay the same price every year after that. As you'll recall, the occurrence policy does not require tail insurance. So while you are paying a little bit more on an annual basis, you don't have to worry about the tail at the end. Whereas the claims made policy is a little bit cheaper up front and it costs you less per year, but you do have to buy that tail at the end. So here's what that would look like. We actually have a side by side um, graph. So for those of you watching, I'm going to pop it on the screen for you. These are sample premiums for a solo plastic surgeon in Springfield, Missouri. For the first year in practice, you can see that the occurrence premium is actually $25,000. The claims made premium is only $7,000. But for the second year, the occurrence premium again stays at 25,000. The claims made will then jump up to 14,000. 
For the third year, the occurrence premium stays at 25000 and the claims made goes up to 18000 Fourth year, the occurrence premium again stays at twenty five, dollars and our claims made premium is now at 20000 And the fifth year, the occurrence premium again is at 25000 and the claims made has finally reached its mature rate of 23500 By the time the claims made premium reaches its mature rate, it's really only about 5 to 10% less than the occurrence premium. And as you can see, these rates stay pretty flat from this time on until we reach the time when the policy cancels. And then at that point, if you're on claims made, you've got to get your tail. And you can see that the cost of that in this example is approximately $47,000. For those of you who are listening, we've included the chart that we're showing here on YouTube in the podcast show notes. So go check it out if you'd like to see this graph for yourself. So if we do some quick math, you can see that the total cost of the occurrence coverage after 10 years and the total cost of the claims made policy after 10 years, including the cost of tail, is actually pretty similar. The claims made coverage does end up being about $3,000 less in the long run. Now keep in mind, these are just rough numbers, so don't take these to the bank. And obviously rates are different based on your specialty and area, but hopefully this helps you better understand how these rates work and what you can expect throughout the life of your policy. Rates may fluctuate year over year based on the carrier's filings, changes to your practice, and other rating factors. For more information on what goes into calculating your rate, check out episode two for more information. We'll link to it here. So this is a lot. Do you feel like you've been drinking out of the fire hose? Thanks for hanging with me. Let's wrap this up with some quick pros and cons for each policy type. First, the occurrence policy. The pros of this policy are, number one, it's flexibility. Since there's no need for tail coverage, it's easy to start and stop these policies at any time. They're really great for independent contractors, locum tenens providers, or doctors that are just doing short-term assignments. They're also really good for doctors who just want to set it and forget it, and they don't want to have to worry about that tail down the road. Another pro of the occurrence policy is our stacked policy limits. There's no doubt that the occurrence policy gives you more coverage in the long run and way more value for your premium dollar. But now here's the cons. Obviously, the occurrence policy is more expensive. It's especially more expensive in those first few years when you're comparing it to the claims made rates that are still kind of ramping up. Another con is that the occurrence coverage is often not available. Not every carrier has this type of coverage, and sometimes it's not available for certain specialties or in certain geographic areas. And one additional con of the occurrence coverage is more of like a buyer beware issue. Because the occurrence policies remain active with the carrier that you buy them from, it's extremely important that you only buy them from A-rated, financially stable carriers. Because you don't want to have an issue down the road if you have a carrier that goes bankrupt and you have multiple years of occurrence policies with them. Now let's switch to claims made. The pros of the claims made are, number one, it's a lower price point, especially in those first few years. It's much more affordable, particularly for doctors who are just starting their practice. It's also widely accessible. Claims made is the baseline insurance product across the market, so you can find it anywhere you go. There's also less of a concern with the financial viability of the carrier, because if something were to happen with your insurance company, you can usually just switch to a new carrier and ask for those prior acts coverage that we talked about before. The cons of the claims made policy. Well, first you've got the looming tail insurance. It's expensive, it's required, and you just can't afford to go without it. So it's important that you budget for your tail insurance. And if by chance you happen to qualify for free tail, that's great. But be sure you're prepared to buy it at any time if needed. Another con of claims made is that the limits are just not as robust as they are on the occurrence policy. They're still adequate, and as long as you carry the appropriate policy limits, which we actually will be talking about in episode six, 
you won't be exposed um, and it's not as much of an issue for you, but it's definitely not as much coverage over the long run. So the bottom line is there is no right or wrong type of malpractice insurance to buy. It just depends on your unique practice situation. If you're not sure which of these policy types is right for you, contact a knowledgeable malpractice insurance agent for help and guidance. All right, we made it. This is a lot of information, but don't worry, we've got you covered. We've put together an overview of the differences between claims made and occurrence coverage in a free download that you can access in the show notes for this episode. Or if you're watching on YouTube, click that description box below and we'll link it for you. If you have any questions on this topic or you want to make sure that you're covered appropriately, click the link below where you can connect with us today via phone, email, or chat. And if you're listening, please visit us online at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S malpractice.com. We have some great new content coming your way in the next few weeks, and I'm really excited to share it with all of you. But if you found this information helpful today, could you do me a favor and give us a like and leave a review? And be sure to subscribe to our show so that you can catch our next installment of Malpractice Insights, where we're dedicated to helping you understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. This is Jennifer Wiggins. Thanks for joining us.